Yes, I know I am a fud. <laughs> I have to say, mate, that was brilliant. I built a website for you and you still fuck it up. Hello? Hello, is that better? Aye, I can hear you now better. And I, I, right, don't, I don't okay. think it's really... It just rips my knit in that. It does that all the time when I phone <laughs> my dad on WhatsApp. So. <laughs> see, see if it's Susan Boyle, I'm hanging up on you now. <laughs> but the pink elephant in the room, Derek. I've still got others. Oh, shit, <laughs> fuck. What was that? I've just spilt my juice right over my keyboard. Oh, you're joking. And my, my shorts now smell of diluted apple juice, but that's uh, <laughs> I'm not sorry. No, no. The, the, it looks like apple juice, mate, but it doesn't smell <laughs> like it. <laughs> Nicki Minaj was a fucking nightmare. Really? They, obviously, stars get riders and things like that, Aye. big list of stuff. On her rider was that she's um, a complete germaphobe, so do not let her bags touch the ground. Right. Um, do not look her in the eye as well. But she came in wearing big bloody blacked out sunglasses. i tell you what though, Derek. I'd ride her. <laughs> <laughs> Josh McPake has extended his deal until yes. 2022. So certainly a standout for Falkirk last year. The only player that tried apparently and certainly one with a, a bright prospect for, for the and future. Nah, Derek, no, 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 no. You've got that wrong, no. mate. Oh, is that the wrong guy? The wrong guy. You sure? Yes. Mm, I'm not so sure. Who is it? It was Zach Rodden that so played for Falkirk right. last year. Right. I'll start that one again then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the stadium erupts in red, white and blue. You've never seen anything like it. Let's go. Hi everyone and welcome to the new season of the iReady podcast. As ever, I'm your host Derek and with me is my co-host Dave. How are you doing Dave? I'm very well mate. How's yourself? Not mad, not bad. Both of us have been on holiday since the last time, haven't we? I know, it's quite hard to believe that I was away on holiday, wasn't I know, it? I know, tell me about <laughs> it. You know. I hadn't even came back and I think you were away. <laughs> that's right mate, that's <laughs> right, yes. No, all, all good, made a lot of good uh, a, a lot of good friends on holiday, loads and loads of blue noses and costs I would like to say. Don't think I've seen one green, green and grey top everywhere, it was royal blue everywhere which was a, a great sight to see and got us a few new subscribers as well mate when I was out so no, it was all good. Fantastic, fantastic. Yes, can you believe it? This is season seven we're into. Um, oh, man. Mental, isn't it? Seven seasons. Hey, I was talking shite. There you go. No, <laughs> so, so, superb, mate. So, it really is. And uh, here's hoping that we get back to winning ways and we can actually celebrate at the end of this season. Yeah, so we've obviously got a few games to cover in terms of friendlies. We're only going to briefly come out, cover some of them. Um, we've got the two qualifiers as well from the Europa League uh, so far that we've played, and then obviously transfers and all that kind of thing. So what we'll do now is we'll go down the tunnel and onto the pitch. So obviously we've got to talk about transfers before we, we get any further, haven't we? Yes, we certainly do. Some exciting ones at that as well, Derek. Yep. Obviously, uh, before even uh, the season ended uh, last year, then we had already signed a few players. So Jake Hasty was one from Motherwell on a yep. development fee. Jordan Jones from Kilmarnock on a free transfer. Stephen Davis, he committed himself, uh, I think it was a year deal, uh, to us after his loan uh, at the end of last she- season. And all- also what was confirmed just after our last episode, I think as well, is Greg Stewart. Yes, which we were all, you know, there, there was a lot of t- talk about him a few seasons ago, Derek, it didn't materialise and, you know, now we've got him, so uh, what do you make of the, the, those signings uh, that, that you've mentioned so far, Derek? I'm quite happy with them, to be honest. It's, I, I know a lot of fans are, are unhappy about them, but you, you've got to look at what's in your league look at the best of the players and to be honest Hasty Jones and Stuart were the best of, of the what's out there uh, I feel and we've got them for virtually nothing you know the only yeah. fee we've paid is development fee for Hasty and you know we 
Yes, they'll probably not be world beaters, but they'll certainly be very, very good squad players. Uh, you know, you could argue that Ryan Jack was, you know, seen as that as well. And he's, when he's playing, he's, he's very good and a solid midfielder. So what we've seen of all players so far, they've been, been pretty decent. Yeah, the, the the only one that I can honestly say that I don't know much about is the young boy Hasty, Derek, to, to be perfectly honest with you. But uh, it shows, you know, such a young player. We've obviously had the scouts out watching him. The manager wanted him in. And, uh, you know, he was certainly a g- good young player with good experience so far. So, no, it looks good. And uh, as I say, I'm sure you're going to get on to the other signings that, that we've made as well. Yes, we've uh, signed... George Edmondson uh, from Oldham Athletic, that was an undisclosed fee, I think it was a fairly nominal fee as well what we paid for mm-hmm. him, uh, that was a long and protracted one and apparently Peterborough were in- interested in him as well uh, but obviously they lost out uh, to us for him, uh, it drove the, the Peterborough owner to go on a Twitter rant about losing out a player, they claimed <laughs> they had an agreement already in place to sign him so okay. uh, we're, we're making friends as we go aren't we? Yeah. No, again, a, a player that I don't know much about, Derek, but again, a player that I think the manager's had his eye on for quite some time because we heard about this guy quite a long time ago, didn't we? I mean, it was uh, right at the end of last season that we were, you know, we were hearing about this guy and showing interest in him, so it's went on for a long time. So, again, it, it must be a player that we've done at home, you know, our homework on. He certainly looks the part anyway. He's a big, strong guy and. Uh, uh, I think you know the manager said that he wanted to have at least two people for each position, uh, and you know I think he, he counts the sort of right side of the centre half and the left side of the centre half as being you know a position a position each. So, uh, I good strong player, and you know it's good competition for the other defenders. Aye, and he's a fucking giant, you know. He is, yes, he's big, <laughs> big, big guy. Um, next player as well, Joe Aribo from Charlton Athletic, and that was basically on the uh, more or less a development fee. I think it was called a cross border fee as well. So you're probably yeah. only looking at yep. three hundred thousand pound again, and again that yes. drew the ire of uh, his old manager Lee Boyer, who wanted him to stay at Charlton. Uh, he then signed for us, and Boyer absolutely slammed him, saying that he's making a mistake and it's not going to benefit his career at all, and it's basically just dis- you know ended his career signing us, and we're not the right place for him to go Aye. he's really just mm-hmm. raging because yeah. clearly he's lost a, a very good player um, and the fact that they're missing out on potential transfer funds if he went to, to somebody else in the, the English leagues um, a bit of, you know, I actually groups. think that's pro- Aye. I think that was probably more what the problem was Derek was the fact that he was you know probably the highest sort of profile and highest ranked player in their team that they really thought they had a gem and they lose them for such low money to, you know Rangers you know has really been a bitter pill for them to swallow but this guy looks the real deal Derek I've uh, I read a lot of reports on him uh, for down south and they really really had high hopes that this guy would go on really really far and he does look, look the part Derek he's strong he's fast he's got a fantastic first touch it looks to me as if he's you know got great vision as well because you see some of the passes that he's been putting through already I think we've got an absolute gem in this guy Derek I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching him more and more yeah certainly from what we've seen of him so far he's, he's been putting himself about and been very good. Um, yeah. the, the next one is the only one we've really spent any money on and that's uh, only signed in the last week there is Philip Hellander from Bologna. Uh, the fee is round about £3.5 million yeah. pound apparently so I think he's a centre back isn't he? Yes, yeah. He's, uh, again Derek I'm not going to lie, I didn't know much about this guy but the one thing that, well, or, or the, the two things that I'll say uh, Num- number one, Swedish international. Number two, he was playing in Serie A. Now I realise that he wasn't. He didn't play sort of half the last season uh, because I think he was injured and he, he didn't get back into the team. But he was playing, uh, you know, at a very high level in Serie A. And the one thing they always say about that league is, you know, you, you have to be a good defender to be able to play in that league. So he certainly, again, he looks the part. He's a young guy as well. It's a lot of money. For, for us to spend, so I'm hoping uh, you know that this guy's going to be a real star for us because it is, a, it is a lot of money in the state, you know the financial state that we're in at the moment it's a lot of money for us to spend on one player uh, so you know I, I'm, I 
I'm really looking forward to, to seeing him play and the manager looks absolutely delighted that he's been able to sign this guy which again you know, uh, really, really uh, looks as if we've got a really good player here. And uh, as I say, I'm, I'm excited by the fact that the manager's, you know, really pleased that he's he's got his man in as well. So here's hoping, Derek. Yeah. You said that you have to be a good player to play in Serie A. What happened to Paolo Vanoli then? He was a quality player, mate. <laughs> he was, he was been it until he got to us. Well, he was. See, see be fair though, Paolo Vanoli playing for us in the last sort of four years would probably have been a star. Let's let's be honest. Playing in the, playing in that defence. So uh, you know, maybe it wasn't quite as bad as uh, as what we can remember, but well, there you go. Probably been unfair, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> and the only other player we've got here is a loan signing for uh, Shea Ojo from Liverpool as yeah. for the season. So um, certainly he comes with, again with high praise. Hopefully it'll be better than the Roma signing, the loan signing they had last year. Uh, I can't even remember his name. That's how much the impression he made. <laughs> uh, that's terrible because I can't re- 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 remember his name either. Oh, no. Sadiq. That, Umar Sadiq. Umar Sadiq. That oh, was okay. it. Yes, I know. Uh, no, it's certainly, but Derek, we, we've seen flashes of this guy, and as I'm sure you're about to get into in the first game, he certainly played a pivotal, uh, p- pivotal. Uh, I can't, can't even say the word now. <laughs> pivotal role in that match for us, and uh, you know, looks a decent player. Yep. So in terms of outgoings, we've not had as many as we actually thought so far, which is a bit concerning in terms of the the wage be- wage uh, bill and, and just having players floating about yeah. there. Um, but as we kind of mentioned uh, the last pod, Kyle Bradley, Miles Bierman, and Liam Burt uh, have all left the club um, on a free contract. Gareth McCauley have left on a free contract also. Um, Lee Hodson obviously was playing with St Mirren, I think it was last year. Yeah. Um, he's left and went to Gillingham. Uh, Lee Wallace has left to go to Queens Park Rangers uh, and joining yep. up with Mark Warburton. Yes, uh, the probably a, a surprising one. Ryan Hardy has left for an undisclosed fee uh, to Blackpool. He was set to go out on loan, but I think that fell through, uh, and then end up signing a full um, contract with Blackpool. Yeah. And then the one that's just happened over the last couple of days there, again a bit surprising that Daniel Candias has went to blah, 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 from uh, Turkey. Yeah, I know. That, that I think that's taking everyone by surprise, Derek. A fan's favourite, let's be honest, and we, but both of us, really rated Candias. And, you know, he, he was a winger, Derek, and wingers do go through a lot of phases of being very quiet, but... Candace, you know, more often than not, had, you know, played very, very well for us. He was certainly a hard worker. Again, unlike a lot of wingers, he certainly wasn't lazy. And, you know, you know, all of us, I think, are actually quite gutted that, that he's away. There's a lot of people saying, oh, he's no as good as what everybody said he was. But no, I did. I, I thought he was a really good player. He had a great understanding with Tav. He had a great understanding with Morelos as well. So I, I was really quite surprised at that, Derek. I don't know what's quite happened there. I know that we, you know, he, he was playing in Turkey. Turkey before, maybe his family really liked it there and wanted to go back, I don't know, but uh, i seen his message that he put out as well, just thanking everyone and stuff like that, but no, I was really quite surprised at that one. Yeah, I mean, you can never never question his his attitude in terms no. of how much he tried on the park, maybe yep. apart from one or two games where the whole team were bad, yep. um, but as you said, it's one. he's a winger and the, his problem, I think, was he's too inconsistent. Um, and that was one of the big problems with him. A fee of about £250,000. Um, I was a bit surprised at that. I felt he could have went for a wee bit more. However, you, you look at the circumstances, he's in the last year of his contract, you know, six months down the line, he could leave for, for sign a pre contract and leave for nothing. He's th- coming up 32, so probably the, the best deal we could have got for him, for him there. Interestingly, he was left out of the first set of uh, games for Europe. Now, it would be interesting to, to know, was he left out of these games because, I mean, he did say to, to Gerard he wanted to explore moving to another club. So it would be interesting to know, was he left out because he wanted to go to another club or did he want to go to another club because he was left out? It's, we, we don't know the exact timeline there. Uh, certainly from what has been said, he didn't really want to fight for his place in the team. 
which that is, you know, it shows his attitude in terms of he wanted to, he, he wanted to still play, but at the same time, it's almost like, well, I didn't want to put the effort to fight in in my place as well, so I just which is quite, my game. which is quite strange, Derek, because he, he never ever seemed to because as you just said there a minute ago, a really really hard worker. It was, it was one thing that we could never ever say about him was that he was lazy so I'm, I'm quite surprised at that I thought he would you know the sort of attitude he's shown with us he, he would have been the type of guy that would have been there to fight for his place but he's gone now Derek uh, you know he, he was good for us he had a few fantastic games for, for us as well and uh, as I say we've just got to move on now don't we yep, wish him luck and that'll be that yep Um in terms of loans out, we've had Robbie McCrory go to Queen of the South for the season. The big surprising one, Ross McCrory, has went to Portsmouth on yeah. the, end of the season. Now, I felt that he was ready for that team. Um, there was obviously a lot yep. of talk about his position in terms of what um, what Gerard said at the start of last year that he could have destroyed. He could have got his career destroyed by playing him in centre back. Um, I felt we should be building the team around him. And the big concern was initially that apparently uh, Portsmouth had the the option to buy him outright if they wanted to however that has been clarified and it's apparently if we choose to sell them yeah. then they've got first refusal however yeah. Rangers have said that you know we're looking for him to come back and certainly yeah. the way Greg Dockett has been playing um, since he's returned from his loan he's been outstanding um, yep. especially that that um, game against um St Joseph's there he was outstanding before he came off so certainly if he can pick up any, anything like he has done then he'll come back an even better player Portsmouth are a, a, a very big club as well Derek they are a team who should be playing at a much higher level than they are due to their fan base and you know the, the stature of the club but we all know the sort of financial problems that they went through as well they're playing in, in, in a lower league but the the one thing that he'll get is he'll get you know big crowds coming to watch him and I think going by some of the reports we've had where I'm playing just pre-season games the fans are absolutely raving about him because I, I think he had an absolutely outstanding match in the, you know his first game playing for them and they're all looking forward to him playing and stuff like that so as you say we just have to hope it works out the way that it did for Greg uh, Dockery because it certainly looks as if it did him the world of good going out on loan and coming back so I certainly don't want to, to uh, you know to sell him Derek because you know anybody listening to the pod will know that I think he's a fantastic player and definitely one for you know as you say build, build a team round for the future I think he's a great player yep uh, Jordan Rossiter has went back out and loan to Fleetwood Town for the season I believe so I can't imagine we'll ever see him again no uh, Stephen Kelly out to Air United Cami Palmer out to Partick Thistle and Eduardo Herrera continues his um, <laughs> uh, loan spell with Nicaxa so again we'll probably never see him as well so yeah I know and the one uh, that I noticed today was actually Jack Anik has also went out on loan to Blackpool that's also. correct yeah so I think he's yep. all, more or less said his goodbyes I think the way he was yeah. ways he put a tweet out because um, yep. I think his deal runs out at the end of the season anyway if I'm right so good keeper uh, when we've seen him but you know, yes. if, he's, if his destiny lies elsewhere then so be it so yeah no definitely obviously we, we don't know what's happening with a few other players like Graham Dorns like Kyle Lafferty uh, and people like that and obviously still speculation uh, is surrounding Tavernier and Morelos now we, we don't know there's obviously been rumour and speculation and the latest one for Tavernier that Newcastle were going to come in with an £8 million pound bid um, we'll get into it later but I'm almost tempted just to say you can take him as long as you tell Mike Ashley to fuck off and never go through our doors <laughs> again you know, and we'll call it quits at that but we'll get into that later in the podcast yeah. So that kind of rounds out the, the kind of transfers. We also had speculation in the, the pre-season about uh, Gerrard was going to be approached by Derby uh, after Lampard has went to Chelsea as their manager and also speculation that he was going to be approached by Newcastle after Benitez left. He's rubbished both of them. Steve Bruce has went to Newcastle as well, so um, more fool him. Yes, I, it was, uh, I don't think the Newcastle fans are too enamoured with that one either, Derek, to be perfectly honest with you. So, uh, aye, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a poison chalice. It's much like uh, getting rid of Brendan Rodgers and bringing back in Lennon, isn't it? <laughs> I know, but were they not supposed to be getting Rafa Benitez, though, oh, Derek? I've, ironically <laughs> enough, yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, the Derby manager is ex-Dutch internationalist Philip Koku. So it is, yes. There you go. Um, we had a pre-season out on Portugal as well and a few notable players never made the trip such as Grace or Lafferty uh, however a few notable players did including Graham Souness he made a wee appearance that's right yep as did very strangely Virgil van Dijk and John Terry as well yeah that's right yeah there was uh, quite strange seeing that those guys out uh, training also but uh, again I think it's the the Gerard connection more than anything else Derek you know to come in Obviously, John Terry played with him for England for years and years, so know, know each other very well. And then, of course, Van Dyke being down at Liverpool, you know, when Gerard was there as one of the coaches. So I think that's been what it is. But good to see, you know, these guys there, you know, big names in world football. So, hi, very yep. good. Uh, Gerard has also graduated from the FA's UEFA Pro coaching course as well. So always good and, you know, yep. a string to add to his bow. Definitely, yes. Uh, season tickets, we have broke the barrier again. 45,757 season tickets have been sold, with 14,000 14, on the waiting list as well, which is both more than last season. So, incredible. And I can't imagine, even if I wanted to, me being able to get my season ticket back anytime soon. It's like going back, Derek, to when I was a boy, uh, you know, putting your name down for a season ticket and having to wait sort of four or five years before you could get one. It says it's going back, but I mean, that's excellent. I mean, that's exactly what we want, so brilliant. No, my luck, I would put my name down, and then as soon as it came up, you know, my time to actually get one, I'd probably get made redundant or something like that. So. Oh, I didn't attempt fate like that, mate. <laughs> So we may as well move on to the actual main part of this uh, down the tunnel section and we'll get into the games. Yes. Yes, yeah, so the first game we played was in Portugal and it was a closed doors game, I believe it was, and it was against Mansfield Town where we won 2 0 with Shea Ojo and Greg Doherty getting the goals. Yeah. Can't really say much about it. I think there is a report somewhere, but uh, again, it was trying out different teams. I think it was like three forty minutes or something like that. Or yeah. However, they, however they done it. Next one was on the third of July, and it was at Auchinhowie this time again. Another closed doors friendly against the New Saints. I think we played them uh, last pre season as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we won one nil with Jermaine Defoe getting the goal on the fourteenth minute. Yep. And the next game was the first big uh, game friendly at Ibrox, which was on the 7th of July, and it was against Oxford United, where we won 5-0. Uh, twi- yes. 22,000 attended, and Candace got the goal on the 16th, Stuart on the 32nd, uh, Mayo on the 53rd, Ojo on the 70th, and Defoe on the 89th, and we played very well, didn't we? Yes, very, very well, Derek. We were really impressed by a lot of the players uh, you know, that were making their debuts at Ibrox, so uh, you know, it certainly did, I know the, the standard of opposition wasn't the best, but uh, it's still a good run out, it was still a great chance for the supporters to see the new players and they didn't disappoint No, Again, you can only take a lot of these friends with a pinch of salt because you don't know how hard the other yeah. team are trying and and you know it's, it's it's a friendly at the end of the day where you, you shouldn't be going into big massive tackles and giving it all. You should be certainly given enough to show your and justify your place in the team and yeah. for the main competitive games. So, um, but the next game here was on the 9th of July and it was a four 0 win away against St Joseph's of Gibraltar in the Europa League round one. A qualifier leg one yep so I don't have a full match report for this because I was out of the pub and I couldn't really be bothered watching the game back <laughs> afterwards but certainly the first half um, you know it was pant waiting time again from a certain sections of the Rangers fans wasn't it for the fact that uh, the first half was largely a drab affair uh, you know we dominated the first half we never created many clear cut chances a few scrambles across the goal a few shots wide um, it was a bit pedestrian at times but we were in complete control for the first half and which ended 0-0 
yeah, I, I wasn't uh, really panicked at that point, Derek. I knew as soon as we got one goal, the you know the the floodgates would open, and thankfully in the second half, that's exactly what happened. Yep, on the forty ninth minute, Jack got uh, made it one nil. Uh, Barisic got the ball on the left, floats a great cross into the centre of the box, and with a placed volley, Jack hits it into the back of net. Lovely goal, wasn't it? Fan- fantastic goal. You know, the, the, something that we've you know that we've never seen for Ryan Jack before. So. Uh, it was a great finish. Yep. 56 minute, we made it 2 0 with Ojo. Uh, Ojo with his back to goal uh, from about 20 yards. Turns, gets the ball, maybe a wee bit of fortune with the way the ball broke off the defender as well. Takes it forward a couple of yards and hits a curler into the bottom left corner. Mm. Uh, again, another fantastic goal. Yeah, great strike, Derek. Fantastic technique as well. And, you know, a brilliant, brilliant way to score your first, you know, your first competitive goal. Yep. 68th minute we went 3-0 up with Barisic scoring he, he, Barisic had a free kick 20 yards out on the right hand side curls it round the wall onto the right hand side of the net the keeper did actually get his hand to it and parried it out but it was just over the, the full ball yep. was just over the line Goldson yep. was there in any case with the follow up yeah it, it certainly was I think uh, it was put down as Goldson's goal for uh, you know certain sections of the media but you know it was a well put well struck free kick and uh, you know, I was just pleased, and as I say, that that was it. That was like the the tie over when that goal went in, Derek. Yep, and then we made it four 0 the last goal of the night on the seventy sixth minute with Alfredo Morelos getting a goal. I think he started on the bench as well, yeah. if I remember right. Uh, it was a short corner worked uh, from the right into Tavernier on the edge of the box. He floats a great po- uh, ball into the back post. Morelos with a header, which again the keeper managed to get his hand to it and parry it away. But again, it was ruled just over the line, and it was kind of just as well because Goldson again got the rebound and the follow up, uh, but he hit the bar from two yards out in, in an open. <laughs> Nate, it was probably the worst mess I've ever seen. Well, we've had a few of them over the years, Derek, <laughs> but thankfully uh, the referee counted the first one, exactly. so that's fine. So, um, game over, as you said, really from the first tie. We, we were expecting it, to be honest. We can never take yeah. anything from granted after the, the progress in either corn um, issue, but the, the tie was effectively over from them. But we'll get into, obviously, the second second tie. Yes. Shortly. Next game after that was a 4-0 win uh, at home against Marseille. Um, obviously Marseille, big team, and one of the big stats from this was apparently their starting midfield five was worth £70 million, or yeah, paid no. £70 million for. We paid 300000 for our starting yeah. five. I know, Dick, and that's the, that was the impressive thing about it. And I know it was a friendly, but Marseille had an incredible team on paper out against us, you know, they had other big star players all playing and, uh, you know, for the way that we tore them to shreds was quite incredible and, you know, it was a fantastic performance for the team and that's what's got everybody really buzzing was that game because, you know, they were absolutely superb, it was a joy to watch. Yep, I I think it was the first goal but Kandia scored on the 17th minute but it wasn't the the goal so much, it was the the ball from Jack from about 35 Uh yards all the way over through the defence and, and amazing control from Kandias to firstly control it, then turn and then shoot within two motions. It was a, a, a outstanding goal. Jack, Jack got the ball on the halfway line, Derek, he's back to goal and in one movement turned and dinked the ball forward right over straight to Ken. As you say, Kandias' first touch was fantastic and uh, and, fi- and fired it and it was a tremendous goal and again showing us something for Ryan Jack that we've never seen before yeah Candace got a goal another goal uh, on the 42nd minute Goldson scored on the 62nd minute I think this was another he robbed uh, was it Katic on of yep. this goal I think and funnily I think Katic after this game obviously bearing in mind what happened with Barisic um, in the last game is a uh, really funny Katic put um, Goldson doesn't like Croatians <laughs> which is brilliant <laughs> very good that <laughs> And to round out the game, we went 4-0 with Defoe scoring on the 75th minute. So, as you said, you know, uh, bearing in mind it's a friendly but an outstanding performance all round. Yeah. I think Marseille were about a week and a half uh, behind in us in their pre-season, so obviously a wee bit to, to work on in terms yeah, of that. But, but- they, they did get beat 1-0 off Accrington and Stanley the weekend yeah, before. Yeah, so. I know. I know. I, I don't think that Marseille had their team out that they had against us because they really did have... 
you know, other international players playing against us, which was the impressive thing for us, Derek. So, no, I was delighted after that game. Yep. And the next game was the next competitive game, Thursday the 18th of July, at home to St Joseph's, again in the second leg of the Round 1 qualifier for the Europa League. Without being disrespectful to St Joseph's, it was really nothing more than a, a formality, because as I yeah. said, the, the game was finished in the first leg. Yep. It kind of turned into more of a training game um, after the second minute, really, uh, because yes. that's when we scored. Uh, really probably taking the intensity out of the game, um, but you know, we really don't know due to the first leg. We, we lined up Fotheringham, Polster, Goldson, Edmondson, Halliday, Doherty, Kamara, Aribo, or Arabo. I can do, that'll be the next one. I can, I can never say Candias, Candias, or whatever. Yep. Um, you didn't have to worry about that now. No, definitely not. Uh, Stuart, Hasty, and Morellis. On the subs bench, we had Firth, Defoe, Barjonas, Katic, Arfield, Mayo, and McPake. And as I said, we scored in the second minute with Joe Ar- Arabo. Uh, it was a worked ball from the right. The ball came to Doherty on the edge of the box on the right. A lovely ball slid into the box where Arabo first timed it past the keeper. Yeah, no, great finish, Derek. And as you say, from the that early goal, it took all the, you know, any tension that that really wasn't there but any any slight you know nerves were to taking away straight away with that goal and it, it just made the, the rest of the night just like you said like a training game didn't it yep ninth minute it's a free kick floated into the box by Halliday from the left it was a glancing header by Stewart just wide 23rd minute, there was a quick move by St Joseph's, a uh, shot from 20 yards but it was a comfortable dive and, dive and save uh, gathered by Fotheringham on the right hand side of the goal 26th minute, it was lovely work to move, ending in hasty, tapping the ball into the back of the net at the back post, but it was ruled offside for the previous uh, pass uh, to him. It looked quite tight, to be honest. But Yeah, it did, yep. yep. 33rd minute, Halliday free kick from 20 yards out on the right-hand side. It went just wide of the left post. Uh, 39th minute, it was good play from Morellas, chasing a lost ball on the left side. Keeps it from going out for a goal kick. Passes to Hasty in the box, who first times it, and it went just wide of the right post. And then we round, rounded out the first half on the 45th minute, with Morellas uh, making it 2-0. And that was his 50th competitive goal for Rangers as well. Yes, absolutely incredible, Derek. Yep. It was a corner in from the left, goal Goldson has a back heel flick at the near post, directing it to the back post, and Morellis taps it in with his head. Yeah, great goal. Well done. The, the, uh, I said, I think I texted you at the time, Derek, and I said this is, uh, you know, if that was meant, if that's straight off the training ground, then that's a phenomenal goal for them to get that much accuracy on the flick by Goldson, you know, for the simple header at the back post. It was a great goal. Yep. It's only half time, obviously, you know, again, it's the game still over. Um, it was really just kind of almost like a damage limitation, whereas don't pick up any any injuries or anything like that. Yep. Fortunately, that happened. 51st minute, it was a corner uh, from the left into the back post. Morellis gets a great header to it, comes off Goldson and out for the corner. It should have been a goal kick, but it was a great chance, however. Yeah. Um, 55th minute, penalty given after Doherty pushed down in the box. No attempt to play the ball whatsoever. Strangely, no yellow card given. Yeah, no. Uh, and the first thing I thought was, well, there's no tab, so who's going <laughs> to take take the penalty here? I don't know if you, you were the same, Derek. Yeah, pretty much. But Morella stepped up and made it 3-0. Powerful, um, powerful penalty into the bottom left corner. The keeper did guess right, but he was nowhere near it ultimately no. because of the power taking it through. Yes. 57th minute Hasty came off and Arfield came on 58th minute was a good claim for a, another penalty after Polster, Polster taken out in the box wasn't given probably because the, the penalty had just been given a few minutes beforehand yeah well. and uh, that was a clear penalty as well Derek which was what got me it was it was a, a blatant penalty <laughs> as you say just because that one I don't think I think the referee was quite lenient on them just because of the last one yep 65th minute Morelos gets his hat trick and made it 4-0 cool can play, ball played out to the right of the box to Doherty who plays an outstanding ball across the goal, finds Morelos who back heel flicks it into yeah. the back of the net again another outstanding goal from Morelos Yeah it was, it was superb Derek, it really was I think the, the 5 million he dropped uh, after the end of last season after being suspended, he probably put it back on to me <laughs> that night, didn't he? So uh, and he came off a minute later, Morelos and Doherty came off and Defoe and McPeak came on the Doherty in that game was Outstanding all game. Yeah, we had a great game, yes. No, yeah. he really did. 
73rd minute, Halliday cleared the ball off our line after the corner was whipped in from the right. It was a header by the attacker into the centre of the box, but directed into the path of Halliday. Uh, it was a quick break up the park with McPake on the ball. Tried to feed in Defoe, but couldn't quite get to him. So in one, kind of two certain moves there, we had the ball cleared off the line. Um, it was kind of lucky in that respect. We had you know the old school defending man on the post. Uh, yep. But it showed our kind of quickness of, of the yes. break, which I think is going to be a big feature of our game this year. Yep, and uh, interesting to hear Peter Lovencrans talking about McPake at that stage because he knows him, mm-hmm. obviously, through the you, you know the Rangers Academy and him you know coming up through it and he was absolutely shocked that he didn't take the shot on himself yeah. there and decided to play in the four. So, uh, you know, it's uh, I, I was quite surprised at that as well. But I suppose when you've got somebody like the four playing alongside you, you're all, always tempted to try and get, get, give them the ball, aren't you? It's almost like shit, this world class players here and uh, <laughs> a better pass. <laughs> You certainly wouldn't see Morello's doing that anyway, Derek, that's all <laughs> no. I can say. <laughs> 76th minute, we went 5-0 up with Jermaine Defoe scoring. Uh, ball down the right-hand side, Poster tries to cross it in, deflects off the boot of the defender right into the path of Defoe, who flips yeah. it into the back of net. Maybe a wee bit of fortune there, but he still had to yep. get the ball across. The exactly, nose. yes. Uh-huh. Uh, 84th minute, Halliday had the ball in the back of the net, but Defoe was offside when it was played in. Defoe uh, jumped and tried to scissor kick a volley, uh, but it deflects uh, to Halliday, who slotted it home. A uh, bit unlucky there. Yep. Uh, Defoe got, got his brace on the 86th minute, lovely movement, working the ball from the right of the goal into the centre, worked the ball into the box, ending in a back heel flick to the foe, running into the box, who coolly passed it past the keeper. Yes, so, great goal. You know, he had only been on, what, 20 minutes and he'd already scored two goals, so... That's right, yeah. Yeah. 87th minute, McPeak gathers the ball on the left-hand side of the box, turns the defender, cuts it back and hits a shot with a comfortable save from the keeper. And the last play of the game, 93rd minute, Stewart was bundled off the ball in the box. Certainly a half claim for a penalty for us, but the referee gave the free kick the other way. You know, if it wasn't a penalty to us, then it certainly wasn't a free yes. kick the other way. I just, I the referee was being very pernickety and he wouldn't he, wouldn't he let the game flow a lot of the time yep. and giving really stupid fouls away. But, you know, 10-0 in aggregate, you really couldn't ask for any more. No, as you say, Derek, 10-0, we, we, we couldn't have asked for a better scoreline than that and uh, on to the next round. And we will play... Our old nemesis, Progress Neither yes. Gone. Yes, exactly, Derek. So I really, really hope... And I'm sure they will be. I hope the players are up for this. And I really want us to go out and absolutely annihilate this team because the last time we played them was one of the most embarrassing nights in our history. Let's be perfectly honest. So I am sure all the players will know what this means to the fans. And uh, I really want us to go out with the same attitude uh, that we had in that last game and just absolutely annihilate this team I really do I don't want there to be any let up at all Derek in the play none at all no and then obviously if we do manage to overcome progress we have and I think this is how you pronounce their name FC Mitte Highland of Denmark in the third round I'm going to call them Mighty Land so there you go <laughs> they better not be fucking Mighty <laughs> <laughs> no that's uh, it's a hard to, uh, draw Derek let's be honest with you but it could have been a hell of a lot worse because there were a lot of really really big teams uh, that we could have faced and you know potentially faced in the next round so that was uh, probably one of the, the better draw that, that we could have got for but still it's going to be a very very tough game because by all means they're a very very big physical team so uh, you know, but bring it on. I, I'm not looking past the progress game. First of all, I want us to go and absolutely thrash them first, and then we can think about it. Yeah, absolutely. So it dro- brings us into the last game we've played so far, which was on the 21st of July. It was a one each draw against Blackburn. Mm. Um, we played fairly decent in the first half. In the second half, Blackburn came a wee bit more into it. I mean, we got a goal on the 30th minute with Defoe. They changed a couple of things about in the second half and they got the goal in the 65th minute. They were more dangerous in the second half than us. Um, but, you know, again, it's another pre-season friendly. I'm not going to get drawn too much into it. Um, I mean, up until that point, I think we had scored 22 goals in, in, in all the pre-season friendlies and the European games. We hadn't conceded a goal. And after that game, some of the... the 
pant wetting on on Twitter was actually hilarious to be honest from some Rangers fans you know oh we need we, this shows you we've got a lot to learn etc and oh we're shite and all that you know it's a pre-season friendly we're going to lose goals throughout the season we will unfortunately probably drop a few points along the way as well we just need to manage it and learn from it and that's effectively what the what the, the, the gaffer said so pre-season friendlies don't take into too much into the results it's all about performances trying different things out to see if, if they, they might work and seeing how, how the things can gel together so obviously the next set of games we've got is on Thursday night we have obviously the progress game that's at Ibrox isn't it yeah. Yes, it is. Yep, that's mm-hmm. the first legs at Ibrox. That's a nineteen forty-five kickoff. Then we played Derby County on Sunday, the twenty-eighth of July, and that's in the last pre-season friendly at Ibrox. Then we've obviously got the second round of the Progress game, which is on the first of August. That I think that's a um, half six kickoff. It's an earlier kickoff right. as well. And then we get into the season proper, which starts again. Unfortunately. At Kilmarnock, cause, as if we've played, no played them enough uh, in the last six months. But that's on the 4th of August, that's Sunday. And then we're um, six days later playing uh, at home in the first game of the season at home uh, against Hibernian. So um, certainly, you know, tough games to go into first. But however, with Kilmarnock hilariously getting put out of Europe against a part team Welsh side, yep. you know, I think, you know, the Kilmarnock fans are not very happy and, uh, you know, an unhappy camp there. It will be a completely different game though, Derek, against us and I'll tell you why. Because Kilmarnock are a team over the last few seasons who have relied on teams attacking them, putting up a stern defence and trying to hit teams on the break. Whereas when they played that team the other night, that's what happened to them. And that's the reason that they got beat the other night is because the team did to Kilmarnock what Kilmarnock does to nearly every single team out there. So certainly against us, I think you'll find that we'll be on the ball a lot. Uh, We'll have the bulk of the the chances as well. And it's just up to us to make sure that we take the chances and don't don't give give them a chance because certainly over the last few seasons, that's just what Kilmarnock's done against us and any any other big team that they've played. They've soaked up the, the... you know the pressure and hit teams on the break so uh, you know we, we just have to go off to a flyer Derek we, we, we've got to win that first game of the season just to start because as, as I say last season was a nightmare and we hope that there's no the same t- type of thing happens you know that, that happened for us before so yeah here's hoping that they pick up the three points straight away but we'll think about uh, Thursday first of all get the job done at Ibrox so that we've not got a tough game away, uh, you know, we play progress in the second game and then we can concentrate on that one. Yeah, just the one last game I want to talk about, obviously we're playing St Murden away on the 25th of August, but the one big game obviously is the 1st of September, the first um, Glasgow Derby game of the season, I'm not even going to say all from anymore, <laughs> I don't want to associate with that scumbag of a club for obvious reasons, however, that... You look at last season, the games we played against them, the four games, we were probably the much better team by far. Mm -hmm. Two and a half of the games out of the four. The the last game at Parkhead, we absolutely pummeled them in the second half and we were just unfortunate with the result. Exactly. We're at home this game. What a psychological advantage would that be just to lay down the marker? Yep. Mm -hmm. That that might make them crumble, you know, in terms of if we manage to get results. If we're going into that game with a 100% record and then we beat them, that would be fantastic. We couldn't ask for much more than that. So here's hoping that the team don't let us down. Definitely, Derek. I think uh, think we'll all know that as well. So, yeah, well, uh, I'm not going to say any more. I'm not going to jinx it. So that rounds up that section and we'll now go down into the last minute arranged classic match. <laughs> and there it is, the final whistle's gone, Rangers have won the European Cup Winners' Cup. Yes, just to qualify that comment there, Dave had, you know, all proud of his punch yesterday, sent me a text message just saying, you know, I've got this game, here it is, this is what we're doing. So me, without checking it, you know, I said, right, that's great, I'll, I'll kind of get that all teed up and all that. So I was looking at the stuff today, about an hour before we were due to do the podcast, and I'd realised, I looked at the link on YouTube... We'd done this game, the very first pod of last season as well. So Dave had, to, Dave had to scramble to try to get this game, didn't he? Yes, I did. But I've, Derek, I got through the. I got through in the end. <laughs> he did. 
the classic match that I was going to go for uh, after I uh, knew I had made a boo-boo with that last one was uh, a Hearts match. And while I was watching it, I actually saw a link to another Hearts game. And uh, the explanation that was on this was Hearts play Rangers with seven men. And I thought, well, what was that all about? And I had, I had a wee, wee look at the, the link, and it was from way back the 14th of September 1996. And the lineups for that day for Rangers was Andy Gorham, Alec Cleland, George Alberts, who was playing at left back, Goff, Petrich in Bjorkland, Stuart McCall, Paul Gascoigne, Derek McInnes, Gordon Jury and Brian Loudrup on the bench, Peter Van Vossen, Ian Ferguson and Ali McCoist. For Harps, a lot of uh, well-known names, Gilles Russi, David Weir, Paul Ritchie, Gary Mackay, Dave McPherson, Pascale Bruno, Neil McCann, Salvatore, John Robertson, Colin Cameron and Neil Poynton. Now, uh, this game will go down in history as... Uh, a game that turned into a bit of a farce in the end, but thankfully Rangers did the business in the end regardless. So the game started off with some really heavy challenges from uh, uh, Pascali Bruno, especially on Brian Loudrop. It looked as if he had him earmarked to try and uh, injure him straight away and th- it was a it was a pattern throughout the first half because any time that Loudrop got the ball Pascali Bruno was in trying to kick him kick lumps at him, bring him down do whatever he could to stop him Uh, and that was straight on but uh, straight after that Hearts actually had a chance earlier on and it was actually Davy Weir uh, venturing upfield, he played a 1-2 with John Robertson and shot and pulled off a fantastic save by Andy Gorham uh, not long after that, Gordon Jury then had a chance with a long shot but hit straight at Gilles Russi. Pascali Bruno again, another bad challenge which went, you know, unpunished again on Brian Loudrop not long after that. But then Bruno finally got booked on the ninth minute by putting in another bad challenge on Brian Loudrop. So three, you know, really poor tackles there, resulting in one yellow card on the ninth minute for Bruno. Derek McInnes then had a chance for Rangers a turn and shot for the edge of the box but well saved by Rusi then there was a cross in from Brian Loudrop on the left hand side Gordon Jury uh, heads it down to George Alberts who hits a low drive it's just past the post thought that one was in but just past the post then Paul Gascoigne uh, turns on the edge of the box fantastic through ball to George Alberts he shoots low and scores but the linesman had the flag up and ruled it offside very unlucky there then George Alberts with an incredible shot that he cracks off the post on the half volley technique was outstanding really unlucky there and then not long after that, trademark Paul Gascoigne run shrugs off play, three players into the box, shoots, pulls off a, a grave, a grave, a save out for the <laughs> corner. Uh, unlucky there. Neil McCann, the, the game's still nil nil, so Hearts are still in this. And Neil, Neil McCann uh, with a long range shot, which was saved by Andy Gorham. But then on the 39th minute, Rangers break the deadlock. Well, that's good play. McCall played it in. It was a short corner uh, played along the line by Gord, uh, to, into Gordon Jury, who rifles a shot right into the top corner of the goal. A fantastic goal for Gordon Jury to break the deadlock, make it 1 0 to Rangers. Two minutes after that, Hearts player Neil Point with a very late tackle on Derek McInnes saw him pick up a yellow card. And then just after that, Paul Gascoigne picks up the ball in midfield and plays the ball out on the wing to Richard Goff, who keeps running and keeps running and keeps running and nobody goes anywhere near him. He gets up to the edge of the box and what he's got to do is just put the ball on target and he flings his right leg back, hits a shot and he skies it right over the bar. 
I know that Richard Goff was an inspirational leader for us, Derek, but when it came to actually shooting, he was absolutely shocking, and he really should have done better with that one. He really should have, because uh, he had plenty of time. But then, at like one minute later, he had the chance to score again. Richard Goff, Gordon Jury cuts the ball back for the byline, goes straight to Richard Goff's feet, he sticks his leg out, and it, this time it comes off the post, it still doesn't go in, so still 1-0, half-time whistle goes, Rangers uh, by far the better team here, but still only one goal to the good. But right at the start of the second half, Pascali Bruno... Low drop still going forward, but it won't count because the whistle has gone. Now, Pasquale Bruno is ordered off. Bruno is ordered off. A second yellow card. Well, really, you know, it was almost inevitable. His first three challenges of the match were all fouls. That better yellow card in ten minutes. And really, the smiling reaction, I think, does him less than credit. He's let his team down, there's no doubt about that. And yet, you see he's fit to smile and applaud to the crowd. Nobody could say anything. He could, you know, he, he, there was nobody could defend him because another, another poor challenge saw him pick up his second yellow card for a foul on Gordon Jury, where he just sent a barge right into him, knocked him off his feet. Uh, so that gave him his second yellow card, and he was off. So Hearts down to ten men for virtually the whole of the second half. Forty-eighth minute, Rangers doubled the lead. And now load up without his shadow. Gascoigne getting away from Weir. Gascoigne again, taking all the time in the world to score. Number two. Well, he showed all the composure, all the skill, enough pace, patience, all the attributes you could want to make it 2 0 to Rangers. Paul Gascoigne picked up the ball on the left hand side, he runs he runs into the box, shrugs off a challenge for Davy Weir, comes to Gilles Rousset, rounds Gilles Rousset, calmly takes the ball, runs, takes another step and fires it into the net. As cool as you like. Fantastic stuff with Paul Gascoigne to make it 2-0 to Rangers. Hearts then had a chance. Neil McCann latches on a through ball, shoots low but saved well by Andy Gorham. And then on the 60th minute, Gordon Jury with a, a late foul on Dave McPherson. But Jury and David Weir exchange a few words there. Well, this is just pure total folly. I mean, we're talking here about experienced professional players. Why in the world would they come involved in that? A red card for David Weir. And Rousset coming after Julia, this is equally foolish. I mean, this is incredibly stupid stuff. Well, the last discipline is in tatters here as David Weir makes the lonely walk off. The referee spots an off-the-ball incident where Davy Weir takes a wee swipe with his arm against Gordon Jury. There wasn't much in it, but there was still contact made. Uh, Gordon Jury goes down. Uh, referee kind of comes over Davy Weir absolutely raging with Gordon Jury. two of them have got a lot of you know mouth and back and forward and then Davy Weir really stupidly sort of sticks the head on Gordon Jury. not nothing major but still does again make contact referee straight over red card for Davy Weir the place has gone absolutely mental. Gilles Rousset is involved. The referee's got a lot of calming down to do. So Hearts then down to nine men. But then it just gets worse and a bit of a farce. Turned away by Poynton. Poynton complaining about offside. What's this all about? I mean, Hearts have lost the place. This is just incredible stuff here. Yellow card for Poynton and a red card. He's been booked already, you see. He's been booked already. The Jim Jeffries comes to the touchline. He wants to speak to the assistant referee who's involved. He's invited back to the dugout. Neil Point kicks the ball and then has a right go at the linesman for some reason. The linesman then uh, signals for the referee to go over. And Pointing has shown his second yellow card of the game. And he is ordered off. So the uh, hearts are now down to... Uh, eight men at this stage 
Jim Jeffries is down in the touchline, doing his absolute dinger, going absolutely mental. So the game is now at snail's pace. Nothing much happening in it again, but then to make the farce even worse. The assistant referee is now drawing the referee across again. Well, now it appears to be Paul Ritchie. Richard Goff trying to calm down the Hearts players, but Paul Ritchie is in trouble. Something happening off the ball. It is a red card for Ritchie. Well, and now down to seven. Paul Ritchie goes off. Graham Allison from the Fries, the assistant referee. One. Richard Goff is doing all he can to calm the situation down. But I think if one more player is all of all, the game must stop. Chris Robinson, the chairman of Hearts, is down in the track, and he wants the game stopped, I think. Well, now, this could have serious repercussions. It really could. There's Chris Robinson talking to Jim Jeffries. Now, it looks as though he wants the players to come off, the Hearts players to come off, and if he does that, I think there will be very serious trouble. The referee calls over Paul Ritchie after speaking again to the linesman and he's ordered off for an off-the-ball incident. So Hearts are now down to seven men and this is when the, you know, it really does, the, the first starts because the Hearts chairman at that point, Chris Robertson, comes racing for the stand. He's down on the side of the park. He's signalling for all the players to come off the park. He wants the game abandoned. The whole thing is going into farce. All the crowd's all booing. Richard Goff was even over at the referee, you know, pleading with him not to send Richie off at that stage. Thankfully, the game continued, but it was really a training game at this this point. All the substitutes were brought on, but one player who didn't want to play at a snail's pace and wanted to score a goal was Ali McCoyst. In the 79th minute, he had a long shot, which was just over the bar. But on the 81st minute... Across it comes here, McCoy's retrieves. He'll want a shot at goal, you can be sure of that. And it's goal number three. He's stepping away from Frail, drilling the ball at the far post. He picks up the ball himself inside the box and hits a low shot past Gilles Rousset to make it 3-0 to Rangers. Rangers had a, a couple of attacks in the last five minutes and a... Uh, Gilles Rousse pulled off two fantastic saves, one after the other. First was a shot from Van Voss and he saved it straight out to the feet of Ali McCoy who shoots, but he pulls off a fantastic save with his feet and holds it on to keep the score 3-0. So some fantastic play for us in the first half, Derek, and most of the second half. The game was spoiled slightly by the sendings off, but well worth watching to see some trademark Paul Gascoigne runs and a couple of fantastic goals as well. So uh, you said that you can remember this one, Derek. I really struggled to remember that, especially with the circumstances of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite funny that I actually remember a game for a change in Utah. Exactly, yeah, I yeah, know. It's all down to the circumstances, obviously, them going down to seven men, and weirdly, two of the guys were soon to be Rangers players after yep, that as well. So that's right, yep. I found it interesting as well that for the last sending off that Richard yep. Goff was uh, pleading with the referee as well not to send yeah. him off it looked like so yeah, exactly. he, I don't think he found anything much in, in whatever no. happened so we were fantastic in that game as well and Hearts were just basically out for, for hacking us down at every every possible <laughs> I think that certainly looked like the tactic especially for Pasquale Bruno he had no uh, complaints about being sent off Derek because he could easily have had about five uh, yellow cards uh, in the first half anyway uh, so very very lucky to stay on I think even for the start of the second half yeah and the Hearts chairman just again it shows you how much <laughs> a shite bag is as well so no quite funny but but like I said Derek it was enjoyable to watch it was great seeing Paul Gascoigne again you know running through I just loved the way that he just used to hassle players off him and barge through players when he had you know when he was running with the ball just absolutely superb so again if you get the chance to go and watch it please do I certainly enjoyed doing that when I was uh, writing up the classic match Yes, so we'll have a, another classic match in the next episode and hopefully Dave will research it better the next time as well. <laughs> you had to get that wee dig in there. Eh? Absolutely, come on. That's, oh, that's what man. I do.
<laughs> we'll, be, we'll be hearing about this in two seasons' time. You know that meme, you only had one job, I mean, I think that applies <laughs> to you tonight, so... <laughs> No, I didn't. Air. I turned up and uh, and, uh, I, I logged on at the right time. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we'll now go into the news. So quite a few bits and pieces to to cover here. Uh, some of it good, some of it bad. First piece of good news here is Josh McPake has extended his deal until 2022, so certainly from what I've been hearing is um, certainly one for the, a good prospect for the future, so that's always a good thing to see. Yeah, I watched him when we played that uh, Youth Cup final that was on live, Derek, and I thought he was the best player in the park. He, he looked absolutely fantastic, big and powerful, but really, really skillful as well. So, uh, you know, that's a great, you know, great news for us. And as I say, I know that the manager rates him very highly as well, and he's put him in the first team squad a few times. So that's good to see. Yep. Next thing is there was a meeting, like a, I think it was a general meeting of shareholders uh, to hold a vote to convert the loans into shares, which uh, passed by about 80 odd percent, I think it was, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, we're effectively now debt free. Yes, despite Excellent. what, despite what the, some of the raging Tims say. Aye, exactly. Along with uh, buying dodgy Hummel kits and Jimmy Bell ironing the badges on because we can't afford <laughs> to get the actual pro- proper I mean absolutely incredible the moon howlers are unbelievable Derek so no that's excellent and as you say virtually m- making us debt free which is great, superb Yep, uh, Stuart Robertson has been elected to the SPFL board and Lywell has stepped down from it the usual thing they do every two years a Rangers representative takes the place of a Celtic one in two years in two years time the, the, the nah, opposite will happen yeah. so no big news there um, massive campaign Rangers have launched yesterday um, mm-hmm. which was the Everyone Anyone campaign basically it's an equality campaign set up with the Rangers Charity Foundation to promote diversity and tolerance um, I think yes. they said as well if anyone is found in breach of any type of thing like this um, uh, they, they've got to go on a, kind of a diversity course almost I think it is so certainly it's a, it's been going on since 2017 they said so it's not only is it a great idea, it's also as well a, a fingers up for these uh, supporters of strict liability. Basically, it's shown that the club are actually taking steps to try and do something about what the whole strict liability will, will you know, would, would come kind of cover. So um, we are doing things in the background, and we know yep. it's in the foreground. So all these uh, call out groups and sham groups like that can go and fuck themselves, as far as I'm concerned. So. You're still getting criticised for it, Derek, but that was to be expected by the usual uh, ad- idiots in the media or or ex-media, as she yeah. is now. Yeah, I'm not going to give her the, the justification no. or the, the no. promotion on this no. here, so fuck her and all. Next thing as well, uh, the first part of our litigation woes, as, as it were, oh. the season, same litigation woes as usual. Uh, Rangers are being sued for £1.1 million for pulling out of the Memorial Garden. To be honest, the Memorial Garden, I didn't like the sound of uh, initially as well, and I didn't like the look of it, but um, the company that set it up, Memorial Gardens Limited, I think they're called, they claim that we are Agreed to agreed to the deal and signed paperwork. Rangers had stated they had agreed to proceed with it, s- subject to stakeholder consultation. However, decided to, to not to go ahead with it. Uh, part of the issue was um, the that it wasn't clear about the upkeep and the maintenance of of the area because apparently it held um, an area for people to be interred in there as well, and the ashes to be to be stored there. Okay. Um, and Rangers said they would happily cover um, reasonable costs for the consultation, but they're obviously thinking that they're, they're going to, um, you know, get more out of us for this. So it's in courts now. I'm not really why to say too much about about that as well. So. I'll go into the next bit of litigation later, but the Rangers have uh, launched their first Chinese soccer school in Shanghai. Basically, oh, right. There's going to be a first, uh, a full-time Rangers staff member there overseeing it, and there's going to be weekly coaching sessions will be undertaken as well. So again, Excellent. bringing the brand out to um, markets that are largely untapped as well, and especially the Chinese markets, uh, quite lucrative and a lot of money running through it now as well. Excellent. Yep, so it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, we're, we're, we're building our bases all over the, the world now, which can only be a good thing. And it's something that's lacked for, for, for decades now, the, yeah. the branding of Rangers. So, 
Next thing, Rangers women's first team and academy have been fully integrated with the club's football department. Brilliant. So uh-huh. Always a good thing there, especially for the whole diversity thing as well. Yep. Next thing, uh, Eros Grezda mysteriously pulled out of the Albanian squad at the start of June. Initially, it was claimed that he withdrew for personal reasons. However, he has personally claimed that it was uh, due to mu- muscle injury. So, who knows what's going on with him now? Obviously, it's unknown whether he's going to have a future with us or not. It wasn't included in the Portugal trip. Um, it's just a, a sad state of affairs. And when he's starting to do funny things like this, like Lafferty was doing as well with, with Northern Ireland, you can only think that... The, the time is, is limited that he's going to be at our club now. It's strange the fact he's, he's, he's not been involved in anything, Derek, and then for that to happen as well, uh, he's not exactly done for us. He's, uh, we've been, you, you know, I, I, I think we were, we were hoping that he was going to turn out to be a star. It's not no been the case. And I've just got a wee feeling that we'll not see, see him again. I think he's maybe uh, in the background getting some sort of deal. There was talk of him possibly moving to France, so... If that's the case, that's the case. I don't think we, we would be missing anything with him if he did go anyway. Yeah. Next thing is Rangers have been given a silver award for the SFA licence. Uh, Celtic have been given a, a platinum award. Now, it's I don't know if you've seen much about it. I don't even know if you know anything about the SFA licence award, but it doesn't make, doesn't make sense. It's farcical. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the grid here. Really? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. So obviously right. it goes platinum, gold, silver, bronze, uh, right. NA. So basically it goes in, in categories. So it goes by your ground, the first team, the youth section, the legal, admin, finances and codes section and the UEFA licence award. So basically Rangers have been given a gold for the ground, gold for the first team, gold for their youth setup, silver for the legal admin and they've been granted the UEFA licence, yet they've been given a silver award. Yeah. You look at St Johnson, they've got... A gold award overall, but they've been given gold for their ground, gold for the first team, silver for their youth, gold for their legal admin section and finances, granted the, the UEFA licence. However, you look at Aberdeen were given a silver award, they've got gold and granted, uh, but they were given silver for their ground. Right, you, okay. You then look at Hamilton, their ground was awarded a silver, uh-huh. their first team gold, youth team gold, Legal admin and finances silver, so the same as us for that part. But they were granted the same as us. Right. The, the whole thing is, I don't, I don't think it has any bearing whatsoever on any sort of footballing thing for for anybody. But the way they've set it up just does not make any sense whatsoever. And no. if you get a chance, have a wee look at the grid that right. they've got here. But it's the most farcical system ever, and I don't understand it, and I don't think anybody does. I even showed a Celtic fan at work it, and he was like. Yeah, that just doesn't even make sense at all. No, no, why? Why should Celtic? Why should Celtic be given a platinum award? They've got gold for everything and granted. And the only thing that we've got silver for is our legal finances. Yet we're given a two grades below them. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's strange. Yeah, farcical. <sighs> Lead, that leads on to more farcicalness from the SFA. Their chief Ian Maxwell has stated that a decision, their decision on Rangers' 2011 UEFA licence, will be made in the not too distant future. Considering they already apparently ruled on it both in 2011 and a short time ago as well. Basically, it was comments to appease a certain section of the Celtic fans in Lyle. Yeah. I actually want them to have a go at us for this because it's quite clear Rangers have said before if you go at us we're going to go scorch the earth at it so I really hope we do because this, we've got a, an absolute you know barrage of stuff to, to throw at them if they, they actually decide to go and have a go at us for this so bring it on is what I say nah. This now leads us on to another farcical decision by um, the SFA. Mark Allen has slammed their decision-making process uh, after they've basically kiboshed plans to put Colts teams in the leagues. Rangers have effectively now pulled out the reserve league um, uh, in favour of top-class friendlies as a result of this. So, um, baffling again, it can only benefit... You know the the teams uh, benefit Rangers and Celtic benefit the other yeah. clubs as well by playing you know probably higher profile games than they would normally. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 
Yep, but behind and everything as usual with the SFA. Yes. Uh, another baffling decision by the government governing bodies is the SPFL and the Scottish Government are withholding a report which documents unacceptable conduct and in particular um, sectarianism around football grounds in the last two years. Uh, Nil by mouth uh, are appealing the decision not to release the document. This is ultimately really going to backfire on them because it's clearly not going to t- contain the narrative they want that Big Bad Rangers... Yeah, uh, or it's exactly. Like, and or it's going to show the fact that it's not just a one-sided issue like uh, the yeah. media seem to think it is. Mm-hmm. Exactly, Derek, yep. yep. C- can, can I agree more? Yep. Um, the BBC were at it again as well. Last week was the 30 years since we signed Morris Johnson, but the BBC Scotland News Twitter, along with uh, one of their editors, Gary Robertson, stated that it was uh, that he was the first ever Catholic to sign for us. Yes, which was wrong. Yeah, research would have showed them that we basically had nearly a full team worth of Catholics signed for us mm-hmm. by this point. He was really the first high-profile Catholic, so a big difference there. Now this is really the, the the big elephant in the room that you were talking about. Aye, quite literally. Or, or starting starting with it anyway. The mega store at Ibrox was only going to be open on match days only, obviously because nobody was going in it. It was a glorified exactly. sports direct. Yes, uh huh. That leads on to what's obviously came out in the, the media over the last kind of week or so, and in particular uh, today and yesterday, that we've lost the latest round of court cases with the Mike Ashley Sports Direct uh, m- merchandise issue. Really, it's all to do, do with uh, you know the, not giving them the right to match the, the deal made by Hummel and Elite, um, or whatever the, the uh, obviously issue is. Well, there's a lot of conjecture and there's a lot of rumour and speculation floating about the internet and to be honest I really don't know what to believe now. There was rumours that were going about that have still to be clarified that this matching deal was made in perpetuity which would mean basically that sports director on the sidelines every time we make a deal with another company we've got to give them access to the details of the deal before yep. we sign it for them to match it. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know if that's true or not, I really don't know. There was an issue as well with the fact that apparently that had we lost the case, which we have, the compensation would be capped at a million pounds. Now, the media are kind of reporting that the judge has said that with the the, the this is wrong and it should be much more than a million pounds. Rangers have released a statement today basically say, saying that the, uh, in fact I'll read it out here, Rangers would like to reassure supporters that matters concerning the litigation currently being brought against uh, by SDI Retail Limited are not as reported. Rangers was disappointed in, by the terms uh, by the terms of the recent court judgement but respects the decision that, of the court and will meet any financial award made by the court. No such award has yet been decided and at this stage Rangers does not even know how much will be sought. Contrary to some reports, the judge has not determined that the con- contractual cap on damages will not apply. Uh, Rangers would also like to reassure supporters that no steps have been taken to stop supporters being able to buy the season's replica kits. So the media are reporting that as a multi-million pound deal and that's obviously causing a lot of panic as well. Um, The judges said this will be dealt with at a later date. Uh, I'm not sure how they can fairly judge any lost revenue by Sports Direct basically because before when the deal was still in place, the seven-year deal, sports there was a boycott going on, so nobody was yep, buying stuff. Exactly, so the, the, yeah. The, the profits they'd be making would be minimal. Uh-huh. Rangers, obviously, you know, if if Sports Direct matched the deal of Hummel, which is obviously in our favour, there are still some fans that would say, "Fuck you, I'm not actually buying anything yeah, from Sports Direct." I exactly. Have bought any tops? So. <laughs> 10 million might have reduced to 7 million because of the fans, so you don't actually know any profits. Um, it seems to be that the judge wants both Sports Direct and Rangers to come to the table and try and agree stuff yes. um, mm-hmm. with, in terms of, uh, of you know trying to do this outside the court and yep. try to sort it as well. Also, it's turned out that Mike Ashley and Sports Direct wanted us to stop selling kits now and they tried to put an injunction in, in place. The judge refused that, but he also refused, from what I'm, the way I'm reading it, he's refused Rangers' argument against trying to get that injunction stopped. Um, basically, Rangers said one of their points was it would uh, uh, hinder Rangers' um, ability to act as a financial uh, being and, uh, and as a club, which the the judge refused that point. 
I don't understand how we could have refused that because it's a mass re- massive revenue stream. So if you yeah. stop that revenue stream, you stop the ability to a club to to function and buy players. So I don't know how the judge can do. So it's it's going to rumble on. Um, and as heart and hand have, have said, there is counter suits going in by Rangers. Apparently, Sports Direct still owe us in the region of three million pound that they haven't paid us. Um, I can't imagine Hummel and uh, Elite not being aware that this is a possibility this might happen. Um, There's somebody on the Rangers board, I think, and he's linked with Club 1872 as well, James Blair or somebody Blair, I think, apparently was the one that was doing some of the negotiating and never gave the pertinent documents to Sports Direct, which was the the deal with, with Hummel. So it's going to rumble on. I, I don't know how much more we can say about it. I just think some mm-hmm. people need to need to you know cool their jets about it. It's not all doom and gloom. There's going to be back and forward for the next oh, years. It seems. And I did and I did retweet something tonight as we were as we were recording from Bob McPhail, and it's a big ten ten long tweet thing, and it's probably the most sane thing you'll hear about the whole situation. And it's you go to his Twitter site to to read the thread because it's certainly talks more sense than I'm talking okay. about. Okay, I'll have a look at that later, Derek. But Derek, we all know at this moment in time, and I'm not going to go into specifics, but we all know that there is a lot of deflection tactics being used, especially by that mob and and their supporters across the city who will try everything to get, you know, any negativity away from them and by putting it on us. So the slightest, slightest we story, whether it's true or not, they are going to make a big, big deal of it to make it look as if we're in the shit in some way to try and take a, you know, the you know, the microscope away from them. We all know why. We're not going to get into it just now. We all know why. So I think we just need to sort of stick to the facts just now and, you know, don't believe everything that you read on social media because uh, it's rife the now with, it, with that lot. It really is. Yeah, I mean, there's there's really no much more we can say, obviously, no. with, with the whole litigation thing going on. Yep. It's going to rumble on, and you know, it's the same. You know, the same problem is just a different season. It's quite clear, you know, that Mike actually really it's not about the money anymore for him because. We've, I'm not going to labour the point, you know, because we've done it several podcasts over the over the past three or four years now um, about him. Just if he had realised, you know, get the fans on side. But Aye. you know, there's there's he's just bought game. You know, I'm an avid gamer. I'll never go into that shop again because yeah. he owns it now or his company own it. So. In a time when the retail industry is on its knees, he's buying companies right, left and centre, which doesn't make any sense for a start. But, you know, he's now, you know, alienating a lot of a lot of his, uh, you know, potential customers. Yes. Fuck him. I don't want, a, you know, this is why I said, you know, it gets to the stage now where if you want Tavernier, fucking take him, but just sign a fucking paper that says you'll never fucking grace our doors ever again. Yeah. You'll mm-hmm. give us back everything that's owed to us and you'll fuck off and leave us alone. So, uh, you know, it might be a hit on the team, but, you know, it might make everything a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, just to go into the last couple of things uh, that I've got here is, um, as I said, Lee Wallace has joined Mark Warburton uh, at QPR, but so has Dominic Ball and Jason Holt, so he's getting the band back together. It certainly is. It yes. certainly is. Plan, and he, plan A and no plan B. And he's also got uh, Liam Kelly there as well, who yes. he'll, he'll, he'll have known for when he was at Rangers also, but to be fair to Liam Kelly, he's a very good goalkeeper, so I mean, he, he's got himself a good keeper, but uh, I... I can I, I can see uh, the prediction that I'm going to make, Derek, is first half of the season, everybody will be hailing Mark Warburton in the championship as a visionary and a fantastic coach and incredible attacking football. And then in the second half of the season, they'll probably just escape relegation because all the other teams will work out exactly how to play against them and know that he's no got a plan B, just like what you said, and he'll get beat the vast majority of his games in the second season. I'm no slagging off Mark Warburton, Derek. He came in, he'd done a job for us in the Championship, but 
he did get found out very quickly and uh, and it's been the same way every club that he's been at but we do wish him all, 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 all the best and I certainly wish Lee, Lee Wallace all, all the best in his new you know at his new club along with Jason Holt as well who you know was a good player for us he wasn't you know a, a phenomenal he, he, he wasn't a world beater but he was certainly a hard worker as well Derek so yep. we wish we, we wish them all, all, all the best anyway and hope it goes well for them yep um, recently released Liam Burt has uh, went on trial at Celtic yes a bit of a strange one wasn't it yes no I, I heard that there was a lot of talk and a lot of rumour again Derek on on uh, Twitter but uh, I will just have to see how, the, how, how that one pans out very strangely he wasn't on their leaked transfer list either was he <laughs> <laughs> But Joe Aribo Joe, was. Yeah. Joe Aribo was, yes. Despite uh-huh. their protestations of, of not being on it. Um, another ex-player, Kenny Miller, has joined Partick after leaving Dundee. I think yep. you know he's going to be playing in his 80s the way he's going, isn't he? Probably, but he is a, he's a very fit guy, Derek, and he's been lucky when it comes to injuries. So, uh, you know, probably a good level for, for him to be playing at now because he probably will still be a standout playing, you know, for, for Partick Thistle in the league that they're in. So, I will just have to see how that, see, see how many goals that he, you, you know, he gets when he, he's playing there next season. Yeah, when he's, uh, he'll, he'll be reduced towards the half, you know, to, at Christmas time because he'll become player manager, won't he? Exactly. Yeah, I think I think that's maybe what he's, uh, you know, his end goal is to be. Uh, I don't think he's made any secret that he wants to go into management. But uh, I, if you're still fit, Derek, and you can still do it, then why not? Yep. Another ex-player, Majid Bouguera, has been appointed his first managerial job as gaffer of UAE side. Al Fujiria, I think that's excellent. That's okay, Maradona was apparently their boss until last year. Really, fantastic! Yeah. Well so, done, Majid. Yep. And the last bit of football news here I've got is nothing to do with us at all, but it's just shown the the farcical nature of of. Scottish football and how much they rely on ticket sales. Now tonight um, Stirling Albion uh, went to Alawa at the Indrodrill Stadium I think it was called um, in their Betfred Cup game um, and they got beat 2-1 I believe as well. However the board um, came out with a statement a couple of days before it and said the board wished to advise that every effort was made to achieve a lower pricing structure but under SPFL rules if the two clubs cannot agree the home club is entitled to charge their normal SPFL price so tonight, for a Tuesday night game in a Betfred Cup game, Alawar charging eighteen pound for adults. Oh my god, eighteen pound! So uh, still an album of then went on to say, in addition to registering a disappointment, I have further advised Alawar Athletic that still an album will, will not take up its entitlement of complimentary access or boardroom hospitality. The club, the, the club board, unanimously agreed that we would be extremely uncomfortable doing so, whilst our fellow supporters were being faced with paying such an extortionate amount. We will, of course, be in attendance, but we will pay our way through the turnstiles. I appreciate that some of our supporters will see this as putting money into Alawar's pocket, but under cup gate sharing arrangements, there is some comfort that around 40% will make its way back into our bank account. I wonder what the, the uh, official uh, attendance was then, Derek. You'd yeah. be lucky if you would get to 1,000 in it. You'd be lucky if you got 1,000 at that game. Yeah, I mean, just £18 for that is... is the, we, we can understand why they, they are doing it, because gate receipts are what and, and season tickets are what makes up the, the the revenue for clubs even in the Premiership, even for Rangers and Celtic that's what our, our big thing is I mean Rangers and Celtic only get maybe about 2 or 3 million I think in terms of TV money organised by the, the SFA and SPFL yep. it really is about time that they have. They need to look at this model because we cannot keep going on like this. I mean, this is a, a major issue with with clubs. They need to try and get fans in the in the ground to then buy merchandise, to then buy pies and and all that kind of thing, which are extortionate yeah. as it is. But they have to make it that price because they're not making enough profit on them. Yeah. So scrap the TV deals because they make no sense. We're getting pittance for them, and allow clubs to go on the, on their own and do their own channels, like I've said before, and then reduce the, that means they can reduce the t- the price of tickets going into the games because there will be a hardcore element of fans, and even a you know a, even a fair weather fan will go more often than not if the ticket prices are reasonable. Tonight's game, like that game tonight for for Alloa Sterling, should have been ten pound at the very maximum. At yeah, the very maximum. I would have said a fiver to be honest, and let get people in the door. But 
you know, it's it's the way Scottish football is, and it will never change. I don't think. Exactly. No, it's a it's a bit of farce, and I'll give you. I've I've got the game in front of me, Derek, and I'm going to see what what do you think the attendance was at the game tonight? I would reckon about two hundred and fifty. No, you're uh, but you're you're closer than what I thought. I, I, I said about a thousand. Nowhere near it. The official attendance for that match was four hundred and twelve people. Yeah. Is it so really? as you say, aye, exactly. As you say, all it would have took would have been for Alawa, still and Albion to open that game up and give free free tickets to people un- under the age of eighteen or o- o- OAPs, uh, you know, and have the you, you know the prices at like a tenner for adults, and they would have got you know. M- more than double f- 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 what they had there anyway, you know. Especially when the school holidays are on, they could have been ruined. They could have had the stadium filled with all the youngsters and you know families and stuff like that tonight. But no, aye, a total farce. Yeah. So, Mum got so drunk at wedding she shat herself on the dance floor. <laughs> she related to Big Dong. <laughs> <laughs> There's always some good gossip to take away from a wedding and I'd say 9 times out of 10 it involves guests embarrassing themselves while drunk. It's pretty much expected practice at receptions but there's a fine line between entertaining and disruptive when alcohol is free-flowing and that line becomes increasingly more blurry making it easy to stumble over or uh, onto the unacceptable side. Unfortunately that's exactly what happened to, to, with one particular wedding guest recently as she got so intex- intoxicated she ended up shitting herself causing the smell Aww. so bad that everyone got evacuated. <laughs> Where was this about? Um, the story was revealed on Facebook wedding, revealed on a Facebook wedding shaming group, where a woman named Ashley described it as a gorgeous wedding with its beautiful ceremony. She explained uh, that the ceremony was was followed by a pre-reception cocktail hour with free beer and wine. Ashley went on to say how one mum, who she called Liz, decided <laughs> to take advantage of the free drinks and was hammering down red, li- red wine like there was no business. The guest said that there was around 50 or 60 other people there, so Liz's drinking didn't go unnoticed. After the hour was over, we all headed to the reception area where there was another free beer another free beer and wine bar for, for dinner and speeches and dancing. Liz got to dinner, but I can't even tell you how many trips she made to the bar for red wine. The irresistible lure of free drinks meant Liz was apparently <laughs> plastered by the time the speeches took place, and then when she came to dancing, she's described as a rhino with a cannon, cannonballs of red wine. She was trying to dance while bumping into people and double fisting cups of red wine above her head. <laughs> she kept screaming that she didn't have her kids so she could party on. She was absolutely covered in red wine. She had it all over her dress, even even on the back. It literally looked like she had a, a cabernet shower. At one point, she tried to dance with the bride, almost spilled the wine on her very expensive white dress. The kicker, she got so drunk she shat herself on the dance floor and everyone got evacuated because it smelled so bad. Complete wedding guest failure. On your cell, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> a legend. <laughs> so, if you have got any embarrassing wedding stories or any stories about shitting yourself, you can contact us on iReadyPodcast.com. <laughs> Aye, and if your mum's called Liz and she loves red wine, then, uh, you know, and she's not got that outfit that she wore to the wedding, then you know exactly what happened. <laughs> So that rounds up the first episode of the new season of the podcast. Um, So as ever, if you go to our website, which is iReadyPodcast.wordpress.com, you can find links to all our social media sites, including Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, which has never been updated in ages, uh, YouTube, uh, our iTunes, our Podbean, and our Spotify accounts as well. You can also find links to our uh, match, all of our other podcasts, our classic match links, as well as our um, reaction pods as well. Yes, there has been uh, a few uh, people moaning, Derek, that they've not had a lot of pods to listen to uh, over the pre-season. So at least. Uh, this lengthy pod will uh, will keep keep them going for a while anyway so yes absolutely so all that's left to say is thanks for listening and goodbye yes take care folks and we will be back soon bye bye and the stadium erupts in red white and blue you've never seen anything like it